Welcome to part 10 of my Unreal Engine tutorial series. What I want to look at in this video is just how to use a gloss map. Now, this is something that one of my viewers had asked me, and I thought it was actually a pretty fair question because a lot of people don't know that roughness and glossiness are actually related maps. So it's one is just the inverse of the other. I'm going to show you how to quickly go into Unreal Engine and just use the gloss map if you don't have a roughness map available. Let's get started by launching the engine. I'm gonna use 4.25 for this, but I don't think that this actually matters. Everything should work the exact same. Even if you're using, I think, Unreal Engine 5, this should more or less be the same. So I'm going to go to games, uh, do first person, type 10, gloss map, create the project. Right, I'm gonna grab one of these cubes. I'm just gonna move it over here. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to right click down in my browser. I'm going to call this gloss material. Then I'm going to open up my, my folder explorer here, and I'm just going to grab a texture that I know has a gloss map. So this is a polygon texture. It's just the plastic scuffed 001. I'm going to grab the red texture, the gloss and the normal. I'm going to drag that into Unreal. And if you just put it right in the content browser, you'll see here they are. Now, for those of you that don't know, I think I mentioned this in a previous tutorial, but the actual textures are these red underlined assets, but then the materials are made up of these textures. So then the, the, the assets are all inside of there, but you do need to have them. So just drag them in here and you can organize them in different folders if you want, but you do need to have the textures in there. You can't drag the textures directly from the folder explorer into the material workspace. You have to bring the textures into the content browser and then you can bring it into your material workspace. As you can see, when I do this, there is a three and then also if I let it go, there they all are. Now, what is the gloss map? The gloss map is just the information that is going into the PBR material of where the material should actually have the gloss. So sometimes this is just a solid color and that means that the gloss is uniform or maybe there's scratches in it like this one. And I'm gonna plug this into the base color just so that we can see what's going on. But a fairly good example of this, and this may not be coming up too well on the screen, but it, you can see that there are some scratches in this texture. So that's just telling it how it's supposed to interact. But this gloss can't go into the roughness. If you do it like that, then everything is kind of inverted. So as you can see, this, you know, this, this square is not glossy at all because it's, if something is completely white in the roughness, that means it's entirely rough. There's not going to be really any uh, glossiness to it. So what we can do is we can just type in one minus and then this is how you actually spell it. I just type in one minus X, put it right here, plug this in. And what this is going to do is it's going to invert it. So you can see how reflective that surface is now. And we will plug the color in. And already you can see what a difference that makes. Let me increase this so we can see it. You can definitely see the scratches in that. And if I just take the normal map, and I plug this in, we're gonna get even more information. I find sometimes the normal map is a little bit overkill, but this definitely works well enough. That's just how you use a gloss map. The gloss and the roughness are intertwined. It's one is just the inverse of the other. If you have a gloss map, you take it into Photoshop and you invert that, you have, an, you have a roughness map. If you have a roughness map and you invert it, you have a gloss map. That's really it. So I just wanted to show people that in case you only have a gloss map, it's completely fine. You can still use it. You just have to add in that extra node to make it fully compatible with Unreal Engine. I hope you're able to find some answers that you were looking for. I am going to be releasing part 11, hopefully in the next day, or perhaps even right after this video. I haven't completely decided yet, but the next one will be how to just make a scene nighttime inside of Unreal Engine. If you have been enjoying the Unreal Engine tutorial series or any of my other videos and you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a thumbs up on the video and also hit the subscribe button so that you can join me for future videos. So I hope to see you over there. Take it easy.